Hello and welcome back to part three of this introduction to intergalactic fishing video series. I'm Ben. I'm the developer of intergalactic fishing. Uh, since the last video, I've been to a few different lakes and I've been doing some fishing. Uh, and also did a couple of fish contracts and I've earned some credits that uh, we can use to upgrade our gear. I also came across a quest uh, at the dock up here in this lake. So I think we'll start by going and uh, seeing what that's all about. Uh, we can go see what this person needs. Um, as you play, you'll sometimes see uh, quests on uh, at docks or from anglers in boats, and they usually have a little task for you to do, so we'll see what this person is uh, needs. So we see an old man sitting in a chair looking out into the distance. Uh, okay, his name's Murray. And he's been, uh, okay, so he wants us to go to a, a lake on his home planet when, from when he was a child and catch a fish he used to eat. Okay, so he wants us to go to Bale Pond and catch a salai bully, and it needs to be uh, two pounds or larger. Uh, so we can handle that. We'll accept that quest. Um... So I, I think before we do that though, I want to travel down here. I saw a, um, a shop, Nick's Fishing Palace. We'll go check it out and see what he has for sale and maybe upgrade some of our gear. So I think the main thing we need is a new boat. We've got uh, this starter boat that we have uh, that Alt Corp starts you with and it's not that good. Um, so I think we'll ship some stuff to our home dock and then go back to our home dock and Equip, uh, set up a new loadout. So we might look at maybe the Rainwater A5. It looks like it has pretty decent max speed. It's got three slots for rods, five slots for lures, and four slots for modules. So that's a pretty good upgrade from what we what we were using. We'll also check out some of these modules. Looks like there's a boat jet augmenter uh, that allows us to add additional power to the boats underwater jets uh, so we can move faster so that's helpful uh, short range teleporter allows us to do a short range teleport to reach minor bodies of water uh, some lakes have bodies of water that are uh, separated by land that you can only get to with a short range teleporter uh, it also allows us to set a waypoint that we can return to uh, here's a live well expansion so we could add four additional live well slots that would be pretty good and there's a live well bulk processor. Uh, this allows us to perform bulk operations on, the, li on our, the fish in our live well. So if we want to dissect a bunch of them at once or release them all or anything like that. Uh, so I think I'll pick up the, obviously, I'm going to go with the live well expansion. And maybe a boat jet augmenter. And so that leaves us with 155 credits. Um, we can pick up a new rod. If we if we sell our existing rod, then we can pick up this one. This is a pretty strong one. So if we were if we were to hook a large fish, we'd uh, have an easier time getting it in. Uh, also, it's pretty low on sensitivity, so um, we might you know miss some bites if we are not careful. But I think we'll go ahead and use that. Okay, so we've shipped some of this stuff to our our home dock. Um, so we're going to head on back to our home lake and go to our dock and set up a new loadout. Okay, so we're going to edit our loadout. Uh, we're going to add our new boat. And we'll add our two new modules. Uh, so you can see now that we've got quite a few slots, um, Go to our inventory, we can see our our new modules there. We see we've got some extra slots for lure design, so we can create a new lure, which is uh, probably what we'll do um, in a minute here. And we've got a new rod there. Uh, you can see over here that our live well now has eight slots. Um, you can maximize to show all your slots or just switch between the pages, or you can just minimize the whole thing if you don't need to see what's in there at the moment. Um, okay, so 
think the first thing we'll, or the next thing we'll do is check out our quest. We have uh, this quest that Murray gave us. Uh, so we need to go to Beal Pond and catch a saline bully. Um, I was fishing here earlier, and so I have some information about about the, the the species in this lake, and I think I have a pretty good amount of information about the Salai bully. So we'll check and see. And you, yeah, see, I caught I caught several of them, and I dissected them. Um, so we've actually got all the information that we need about the Salai bully. So we're going to design a lure to catch a uh, Salai bully, and then we'll we'll use this information that we have to try to catch one. So. Uh, in order to create a lure, go to your inventory, uh, you can create a lure, we'll just build a new one. So this is the, um, this is the lure creation uh, screen. Over here you have a list of parts that you can add uh, to the lure. And the way that um, it works is the, d the different configurations that you put these parts in uh, it affects these lure factors in different ways and I'll go through how it affects each of them. Uh, the first thing we want to do though is to overlay the species that we have the information about uh, that we're looking for. So we're going to build a lure to try to catch a saline bully so we want to uh, overlay those um, values on the bars here so that we can tell uh, you know when we're getting close to a lure that would work. So. I'll start with um, just putting some parts out here and you can kind of see the values changing as I move these around and add new parts. So the way it works is the shiny factor, the spectrum between dull and shiny, is determined by the number of outer grid squares that are filled with the corners increasing it by more. So you can see that if I move this up here, you can see the shiny factor go up. And if I move this down here, uh, you can see it go up. Uh, and if I put it uh, these in the corners, uh, you can see that it goes up even more. So the shiny factor depends on how many of the outer grid spaces are filled. And it's sort of like a little mini game to get the factor that you want. You can see if you put stuff in the outer grid, then you know, you've got a very shiny lure. Whereas if you don't have anything in the outer grid, you've got a lure that's very uh, dull. The next factor is the uh, quiet to loud um, spectrum. Uh, the, it's the noise factor. It's, it's uh, determined by how many open spaces are in the lure configuration uh, with the more sides and open spaces surrounded by increasing the factor to a greater extent. So what that means is you can see these open spaces surrounded on six sides um, would increase the uh, noise factor by quite a bit. So if we you know, create a bunch of these kind of spaces here that have uh, that are surrounded, you can see the, the noise factor going up. So if we, like we add this here, we'll go up pretty far. Maybe we'll surround that more. And now you can see the noise factor getting quite loud it's because these open spaces here create noise as you know as the lure moves through the water. So that's now if you were to move these, you know, reconfigure this so that there's very little open space there, then you notice the, the it would be a very quiet lure. Um, noise factor would go down. The uh, the next. Um, Spectrum is the size uh, spectrum. It's a small to large uh, scale. Uh, this is de determined by how many of the grid squares are occupied in addition to the number of parts that make up the lure. So this is um, this lure has a lot of different parts. So as you add more, it gets larger. Um, and as you remove parts, it gets smaller. But also if you the number of parts actually matters as well. So that's a lot of different parts. But if you were to use a, you know, a, a single part that has a lot of, that covers a lot of the grid, it has less of an impact on the size. So if we were to use these two 
um, parts it's quite a bit smaller in terms of the size factor whereas if you had a bunch of different parts going everywhere okay and then the last one is the color factor uh, between dark and bright and that one's probably the simplest to change because you can paint each of these lure parts and then it's just the average um, color value of each um, of each square so if I were to paint some of these gold and then some of these lime and then I paint one black paint them all white you can see the color factor is the average of um, of the, the painted parts so that one's probably the most easy to uh, change so we will go ahead and start over here um, oh yeah there's one more thing uh, the weight and the buoyancy of the item of the uh, of the lure is determined by the number of uh, grid spots that are filled on the top affects buoyancy or increases buoyancy and if you put them to the bottom it increases weight so if you had these two parts down at the bottom then it'd be a sinking lure because it weighs more than its buoyancy factor its weight factor is higher than its buoyancy factor but if you move these up to the top then it would be a top water lure because the buoyancy factor is higher than the weight factor okay so in order to design a lure for uh, to catch Sally Bully, we want to just start start playing around a little bit with uh, some of these parts. And I, I will notice that we need a pretty a lure with a pretty small size factor. So using um, parts that cover more of the grid space as opposed to using a bunch of small parts is going to be our best option here. So we're the size factor is about right on that, but you know we we're gonna need to increase the shiny factor and the noise factor. Uh, and down here we have an estimation of how of how much uh, this species would be attracted to this lure based on what we know about this this fish. Um, and there are some ways to kind of. Uh, affect these values with lure mods. Sometimes um, the configuration is going to be pretty difficult to uh, at least get close on all of these factors just due to like the fact that it's a very small size you don't have a lot of parts to work with and you might need a shiny or a loud lure without you know without a lot of parts to work with it's going to be more difficult. Um, so you can use lure mods which can do things like double the shiny factor or swap the uh, value of the shiny factor and the noise factor. This just allows you a little bit more control um, over these values and usually you'll probably add those in towards the end of the design. So I think we'll probably go with a large part in the center here and uh, we're gonna need probably a couple more large parts. We need to get the shiny factor up and the noise factor so I might look at couple of these guys. Um, okay, so that's about that's about the noise factor we need. We can see these uh, spots that are surrounded and that's why we're getting an increase in noise factor. And actually this is this is okay too on the size factor. It's not it's a little bit larger than the fish would like, but it's not so bad. Um, and I think that um, we should be able to increase the uh, shiny factor. We should be able to double the shiny factor, and we should get pretty close to what we're looking for. Yeah, so that's a pretty good design. That's about 93%. We'll take that. Uh, but one thing I noticed was that the Sally Bully likes, uh, it tends to be found near the surface, so we might want to make this lure a topwater lure. So we could probably do that just by switching these to the top. And we'll move that back down one. Yeah, okay, so that looks pretty good. So now we've got a topwater lure. Um, the color factor, I started with green, that's pretty good. We might increase that a little bit with maybe an indigo body. That looks a little bit better. That seems to be right on. 
Okay, so now we've got uh, this lure, and I guess we'll name it. Um, so this is the Sally Swindler. <laughs> okay, so we're going to try to swindle some Sally bullies. All right, so we'll build that. Now you can see uh, you've got this lure here um, that you can you can put on. So we'll go ahead and put that lure on and we're in the, yeah, we're in bail pond. So we just went to start fishing. Uh, I'll go ahead and change my winding speed uh, to the little bit faster and we'll, we'll probably start fishing near the surface. I'll go ahead and wait till the morning uh, so we can see everything. Okay, so you can see our boat is quite a bit faster, uh, our new boat, which is nice. So we're going to try to catch a Sally Bully. Uh, it weigh, needed to weigh two pounds, so we'll start. It's a, sur it's a surface uh, topwater lure. There, that might be one right there. Um, so it's going to stay on the surface. Okay, that's a slyer fish. Not what we're looking for. So we're going to bring it across the water. see if we can't catch a satellite bully. Okay, there's a hit. It was moving at the speed that it likes, so we'll see. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so we've we've caught a satellite bully. Uh, we have this little quest marker because it just to notify us that this is a valid fish for that quest. Weighs more than two pounds. Um, so once we once we built a lure that we can overlay the stats of that lure, we can see how similar our lure is to what the fish likes. Um, you know, we, we use that information that we had to create a lure and then we use the information we knew about, you know, the winding speed and where the fish is found to quickly catch the fish we were looking for. So we'll go back to Plank Pond and we will go talk to Murray and bring him his fish and I'm sure that he will be very happy. Got one right here. <laughs> okay, so he's uh, he's thankful for our for uh, bringing him that fish, and I guess um, I guess we'll stop this video right here. And I think next time we will look into uh, exploring an unknown lake, uh, which I'll get into what that means in the next video. So I hope to see you back in the next video, and thanks for watching.